Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I am joined here by everyone's favorite and she hasn't been on my channel in a while. I don't know why, but here's Willow. I am here with Willow. Today we're going to be talking about reading slumps and how to get over a reading slump, how to deal with a reading slump, what to do when you're in a reading slump. Willow just saw some birds fly by. I'm gonna go get the birds. <laughs> so she is going to take a nap. Oh, I think she's officially distracted by the birds now. Well, she might take a nap. She might stare at the birds this whole time. We'll see what she does. But she's getting so big. Can you believe? Can you believe how big she is? When did this happen? When did this happen? When did you get so big? Oh my goodness. So today I uploaded this video and it is my creative rejection and redirection vlog. It's where I talk about my struggle with writing, overcoming my struggle with writing and my reading slump and time management and being kind to yourself. And a big struggle for the past few months for me has been this reading slump that I have been in and it has just been... Oh, she, she's laying down now. Okay. She's taking a nap. I have been trying to get over this reading slump for months and it has started at the beginning of the year and I tried so many different things to get me out of this reading slump and what I've discovered is that the main thing that was causing it was my struggle with writing my own novel and I couldn't really separate myself my writer brain and my reader brain. So it was hard for me to separate those two parts of myself and to just enjoy what I was reading and not really compare my story to what I was reading or anything like that. So I thought that for all the other people that may be going through reading slumps either right now or in the future whenever you find this video and I figured I would ask you guys how you get over reading slumps and I could compile a list of different strategies and techniques that we could all try to implement and use whenever we are in a reading slump. So I have a really long list. I asked you guys on my Instagram story and so many of you answered. So I compiled all of your responses and we're just gonna fly through them. So the first suggestion that I'm going to start with, only one person sent me this reply, but I loved it, and that is to smell your books. Genius, genius. I never think to do this when I'm in a reading slump to just smell your books because the smell of books just makes you excited to read. It makes me really excited to read. So I feel like when I need to light that spark of reading again, I need to, I need to smell my books. Done. Done and dusted. That is the only response I needed. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I just really liked that response, so thank you so much um, for that wonderful response. Also, before I go on, I do want to say that this is a style of video that I would love to keep doing if you guys like it, where I ask you questions and you guys give me responses and I go over the responses in a video. I feel like it makes it more communal and it's not just me talking and giving you my suggestions of getting over a reading slump, but I like that I'm getting a lot of different people's suggestions, so it's not just me. And I go over your replies and we have it more of a discussion rather than me just telling you what I would do, depending on the, what the topic is. Anyway, let me know down below uh, in a comment. Also, let me know if I don't mention any of your suggestions. Let me know if you have any other reading slump suggestions, how to get over a reading slump in a comment. So let's keep going. The next one is try a chapter, which I have done a lot in the past actually. So when you don't know really what to read and you're more of a mood reader, I am 100% a mood reader. I think it's really a great idea to pick maybe five different books, open them up, read the first page of each one or the first chapter of each one and decide which one hooks you the most. I think when you're in a reading slump, the hardest part is to stay engaged in whatever book you're reading. So I feel like finding a book through a few different options could help you a lot with staying engaged and staying hooked in the story. 
so I really like this one. The next one I also really like, and that is write something instead. Whether it's writing in your journal or writing a little note in your phone, writing a poem, writing your own story, any form of writing I think could really benefit reading, and it could of course change up instead of reading someone else's thoughts, you are your sharing your own thoughts, so I think that that could be really exciting and a nice change from reading. I really, really, really like this next one. This next one is find yourself a reading buddy to encourage each other to read. I feel like that's what I love about the book community, that's what I love about making videos and posting on Instagram and talking to you guys, because I think that there is always that common encouragement, which also links, I think, to the next suggestion, and the next suggestion is to watch booktubers, watch different booktube videos, or watch bookish videos in general. A lot of people mentioned watching my videos, so I'm so glad that my videos can be a source of encouragement and inspiration to pick up some books as well. Um, I also do watch a lot of booktube when I am in a reading slump. Something that I have been doing a lot recently is I have been watching a lot of author interviews, so it helps not only with my reading slump but also with my writing. The author that I have been deep diving into recently has has been Kate DiCamillo, um, who I love so much, I owe so much to her, and I have just, she has just been my main source of inspiration for my reading and writing um, for the past few weeks now, and I love her so much, and I can't wait to continue to read and watch every video that she does, and every interview that she does, and every book that she writes, so yes. Hello Willow, you woke up? You woke up from your nap? What you doing? The next one is read a light-hearted middle grade or young adult book. This can also be associated to my love of Kate DiCamillo. Kate DiCamillo is a, a children's writer, a one of the best children's writers in my opinion, and I I love her books and what I have been doing is I've been reading a lot of her books recently and they are middle grades and they are just so wonderful to oh thank you for the kisses. Thank you. Um, I think why people were suggesting to read middle grade in YA is also another suggestion is to read a book that is fast-paced and to read from an author that you know you love. This is all kind of associated to reading middle grade for me because that's like reading Katie Gamello is doing all these different things. Willow is giving my hand some lovely kisses. You're kind of falling though. Okay. I also think reading a middle grade and a YA, usually they're fast paced, they're shorter, all these things that are also other suggestions that people have given um, and I think is really helpful when you're in a reading slump is, um, <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. Oh, are you awake now? <laughs> Please be quiet, I'm trying to nap. <laughs> The next one is go book shopping or go to the library. I definitely agree with this one as well because I feel like putting yourself in a bookish atmosphere is always exciting and it gets you excited to be surrounded by all those books. You might see a book that you remember that you were once interested in and it reminds you of the book or just being, I think just being in that setting can be really helpful. It's kind of like you're trying to light a match and you're trying really hard to light this match but it won't it won't catch flame, it won't spark and then you finally hit it a certain way, you do something and it does catch and you can light the candle of reading again. Um, <laughs> do we like that analogy? I like that analogy. And remind you of all the, all the wonderful books and the wonderful worlds that are out there for you to explore. And then another person said to read a graphic novel or poetry and a lot of other people were recommending to change up your genre. Um, if you're reading a lot of novels then do change to a graphic novel or poetry or plays or something that's a bit different to, again, keep you engaged, to keep things exciting, to not get so burnt out with just one thing. I think figuring out what will suit you best. I also made this other analogy and I really like it. Um, it's kind of like you're diagnosing yourself with a reading slump and then you have to prescribe one of these one of these suggestions will hopefully cure you of this malady of a reading slump. When I'm in a reading slump, I just don't feel like myself and I just feel off. So if you are 
prescribing yourself with a reading slump, then hopefully one of these things will help you. Um, and if that is reading a graphic novel after a bunch of novels, then amazing. But I, I guess you just have to figure out what suits you best. Another suggestion that a ton of people recommended was to DNF your books if you're not enjoying them um, and to not be afraid to DNF and to not be afraid to pause a book that you're reading. It doesn't mean that you have to completely stop reading it and never return to it. Maybe you're just not in the right mood for it. Try to find something that you are in the right mood for, which again, then you can turn to maybe trying a chapter, figuring out which one interests you the most. This next one is one that I do all the time, and that is to watch book-to-movie adaptations. I think that what is so exciting is when I find a movie and I don't realize that it's based off of a book, I watch it, I love the film, and then I see at the end that it says based off of a book written by whoever, and it makes me really excited to read the book. A lot of people said that they read trashy romances or that they read guilty pleasure reads, but I feel like guilty pleasure, because we are reading for pleasure, I just don't think it should be guilty. I don't think anyone should feel guilty for reading a specific book. If you like reading trashy romances and that's all you read, fantastic! Take pride in it. If you are enjoying the books that you're reading, that's all that matters. What are they? Um, chiclet, shirtless guy on the cover, maybe he's a cowboy, maybe... He's wearing a cowboy hat, has long hair, no shirts, jeans. If that's your guy, amazing. Amazing. <laughs> if that'll help you out of a reading slump, then I am all for it. One person said that they read Jane Austen to feel alive again, and I love that response because I think it's going back to authors that you know that you'll love because it won't set you up for failure, you will know that you'll enjoy it. And what I love is that you do have those authors like this person says about Jane Austen that makes you feel alive, that makes you feel like that reader that you are, that you identify as. And I think reading from a person that you have complete faith in, that you love all their books, is always helpful when you are maybe reading a lot of books that just haven't been um, lighting that spark for you. Another person suggested to read a fast-paced book like a thriller. What I like is when a book captures my attention to the point where I don't want to put it down. I just want to know what the, what's going to happen next. And I think that that's what this person means. With thrillers, you're always anticipating. You're always on the edge of your seat. You're always wanting to know what will happen, who did it, what will the repercussions be, how will the next page pan out. And it's that excitement, it's that hook that will make you want to keep reading. Um, and... Willow looks so cute. Oh my gosh. I'll take a picture and I'll insert it in the video. Willow. Oh my goodness. Why are you adorable? Okay, I'll put that in the video. <laughs> She looks so cute. This next one I really like. It is change your reading space or reading location. You were just sleeping so adorably. Did I wake you up? I'm very sorry. Are you changing positions? She's changing positions. Okay. Um, <laughs> and I like that because I think that for me, I work from home because I'm a freelance illustrator and writer, that I feel like changing my location sometimes is very much needed. Um, and it makes the, the whole process of reading more exciting because you are, it's more of a journey. It's more of an experience. You're going to a certain place, whether that's the library or the beach or um, a lake nearby, or a garden, or um, just going outside, going to a different shop, going, reading in your car, driving around, wherever that is for you. And I think that it just makes it more exciting. And sometimes you just need that excitement with the process of actually sitting down to read. Um, because I think surroundings really do influence our reading experience, which makes me think of when I read the ending of Anna Karenina, the train scene on the train going back to college because I went to school in New York City. That was an experience. That was definitely location-based. <laughs> so location has a lot to do with reading. So yeah, maybe change up your location if you're reading in the same spot. Even if it's different spots around your house, I do feel like that helps a lot as well. Now this one is the opposite of going back to a genre you know you love. Maybe you need to try a new genre. Maybe you need to try something fresh because I know for me, 
I was going through a lot of Russian literature, as you all know, because you can see all those videos on my YouTube channel, but I was getting a bit bogged down and kind of burned out by all of these Russian books, and I do feel like it's so exciting to find a genre or a type of book that you really love, but sometimes reading so much of something can be a little draining, and so changing things up, trying something new, could also lead to um, new favorites and new discoveries and to always keep things exciting, keep things fresh. So I definitely like this suggestion as well. Now we are getting to the suggestions that were highly recommended and the suggestions that were most popular. The first one is listen to audiobooks. This is, I think, the number one thing that I do when I'm in a reading slump or just when I'm reading in general, I'm always reading an audiobook because I do a lot of things that require my visual attention but don't require my mental attention. Um, like when I'm drawing or when I'm doing something around the house, I really like listening to audiobooks while I do different things that don't need uh, my visual attention, but need my mental attention. Um, so that's something that I really love, especially when it's an audiobook with either a full cast of characters or if it's a narrator that I really love and it feels really immersive, it brings the story to life. I always feel like audiobooks are the in-between of a physical book and a movie adaptation because it's combining the actual text with a performance and I think that audiobooks are wonderful. The next one is something that I was really happy to see and a lot of people were saying to, they try not to harp on it, they try to just wait until they're ready. Um, so I have written down, don't stress, do other hobbies, don't harp on about it, give yourself space, your mind space, and to read when you feel ready. And I think that it's so important to not put your put pressure on yourself, uh, especially with me making videos. I do always feel like I have to be reading something new and I have to be working towards my Goodreads goal and, um, and it's always associated with numbers and not really um, kind of forgetting that I should be, oh, hello Willow, <laughs> that I should be reading for enjoyment and that I I shouldn't be too focused on how often I'm reading and how many books I'm reading and I guess just reading when you're ready and reading how often you feel like you need to and if you don't feel like you should be reading at all then that's completely fine and to to wait until <laughs> to wait until you're ready to read um and let your mind and your heart I guess tell you when it wants to read again and to do other hobbies, go on walks, find that other part of yourself. I, I know I was saying that I identify as a reader, but that's obviously we, we are all multifaceted. Um, as Walt Whitman says, I am large, I contain multitudes. And you are also full of multitudes. Sometimes a reading might not be the answer, so maybe don't read at all um, and wait until you're ready to read again. Willow is now staring out of the window. I like how she goes from napping to completely wide awake in like one second flat. Now we are on to the one that I think I recommend the most. Also the first one as well, the next one that's coming after this, the last one. Um, but the one now is to figure out a time that you have to yourself that you can dedicate to reading and set yourself an achievable goal. So I always read before bed because I love getting that inspiration right before I go to sleep so that my mind is filled with things that make me happy, um, filled with story, and then the next morning usually I write right when I wake up and I still have that mind of being in a story and I can now put myself in my own story and it's really inspiring. Figuring out a time that you can read and that you can have that be your time every single day 
um, that you can always return back to and set yourself an achievable goal. Um, if that's one page or one chapter or three chapters or ten chapters, whatever that is for you, then we have the most commonly suggested response of how to deal with a reading slump, and that is to return to a childhood favorite or reread your favorite book. What better advice could you ask for, really? Because you just, you'll know you love it. You'll know you'll love it, and it's from an author that you know you love because it's your favorite book, or it's a childhood favorite, so it's nostalgic. You just know what you need because you've had it before, and it has helped you before, and it has provided you with happiness, and it has made you excited and joyful and made you love reading. If it's a favorite book or if it's a book that you loved when you were younger, it'll hold a really special place in your heart. So even if you don't feel like reading, then that will just make you so excited because you know that it's something that you love already. And what more could you ask for when maybe you haven't been reading a lot of things that you've been loving or when you need that spark, it's, it's returning to a book that has already provided you with that spark and hopefully it will provide you with that spark again. So I could not agree more with suggestion number one, which is to just return to a book that you know that you love, reread a favorite, especially reread a childhood favorite, because I feel like those are even more impactful because They've not only been a favorite in recent years, but they've always been part of your life. And I am always quoting Kathleen Kelly from You've Got Mail because I think it's one of the best lines in a film I've ever seen. And that is, the books that we read as children affect us in a way that no other reading in our life does. And I could not agree more. Um, so if you are suffering with the malady of a reading slump, then I hope that this list of prescriptions... <laughs> is this a good analogy? Uh, can I be doctor? Dr. Carolyn? <laughs> um, I hope that this list has helped you maybe figure out the best way to deal with that slump and to figure out a way to just move past it and to feel like yourself again and to read again and to be excited to read again. And it's okay if you need to stop reading. It's okay if you need to pause and pick up another hobby. It's okay if you DNF books. It's okay if you if you do anything because it's, again, it's supposed to be for enjoyment and it's supposed to be a wonderful process. Reading should be something that we see as a privilege. I always try to see reading as a privilege that I I can't believe I get to experience all these wonderful worlds and, and these wonderful characters. And, um, and I think remembering that again is also really helpful to, to realize how special reading is. Um, because I think we see it as something that we have to consume at such a quick rate. And when we slow down and we realize how wonderful and special and magical it is, I think we can just savor reading again, and we can savor the experience. Um, so I hope that this video has helped you. If you like this style of video where it's more um, a community, I guess, of not only me giving you my tips, but sharing your tips as well. And uh, I love just making you guys a part of my videos. So let me know what you think. Um, do you want me to keep doing these kinds of things? And make sure to follow me on Instagram because that's just the easiest way for me to communicate with you guys and to do these question and answer boxes. And I really hope that you enjoyed. Um, I am getting out of my reading slump. I hope that if you're in a reading slump, it will end very soon and that this video helps you. And if you're not in a reading slump, then please let us know either what you're reading, how you handle reading slumps. If I didn't mention something that you think is really helpful that you do when you're in a reading slump, feel free to leave it in a comment down below. And thank you for helping me with my reading slump. And I hope that I can return the favor and now help you with your reading slump or potential reading slumps, or if you're currently in a reading slump, I hope you're not. But anyway, I hope you're having a fantastic day, reading some amazing books, and I will see you soon in another video. Happy reading.